Hi, I'm Phil Halper, a YouTuber who has interviewed many of the world's leading cosmologists, including Stephen Hawking, Roger Penrose, and Alan Guth. And I'm Nia Shafshirdi, a professor of physics and astronomy and a cosmologist, and also an author of the book with Phil on Battle of the Big Bang. Wow, you actually have a copy. Oh, I don't have one yet. It comes out at the end of May. And uh, to celebrate the release, we are going to give a little sneak preview of some of the material that's in the book by exposing the top myths about the Big Bang. Things that are said over and over again, yet are just plain wrong. So let's start with myth number one. And it's about the discovery of the CMB. Because two scientists won the Nobel Prize for being the first to discover the CMB, when in fact, they were not. Nash, why don't you explain what is the CMB? So CMB is this uh, amazing thing we discovered. Uh, of course, exactly who discovered it is, is, is an interesting question. But according to most textbooks, it was discovered by Penzias and Vinson. And it was this glow of microwave radiation that uh, can be seen in any direction in the universe that you look at. And uh, at the first, it was a mystery, but it was. But then uh, later on, it, it was became clear that was the radiation that was emitted from the Big Bang. That was the hot, fiery beginning of our universe. Right. And how did Penzias and Wilson supposedly discover it? Well, Penzias and Wilson were scientists in Bell Labs in New Jersey, close to where I did my PhD, although they did it a little bit earlier than uh, I did my PhD there. That was back in the 60s. They were basically, they built this huge uh, microwave antenna and it turned out that the, 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 the antenna detected some a small level of noise and so there's something wrong with their antenna. Maybe there are pigeons that have uh, pooped uh, somewhere in there. So they kept pointing it in different directions and then cleaned the antenna. They kept seeing this noise and uh, then they, they actually heard from the great point that maybe there is some theory that explains why there should be this microwave radiation. They called, called up Bob Dickey down the road in Princeton. Uh, and then Bob Dickey explained to them that there was this uh, theory that suggested that the universe started uh, many billion years ago. And there was a there was a hot radiation that created at that time. And that hot radiation is cooled down and we can be seen as microwave now. That was, that was, according to textbooks, the first uh, evidence that uh, we humans had for this cosmic microwave background radiation. Right. But the truth is that it was discovered decades earlier by Andrew McKellar. So who was Andrew McKellar and what, what did he do? Andrew McKellar, it's not surprising he's a fellow Canadian. Of course, the good things are done by Canadians. <laughs> um, uh, he uh, he was uh, he, uh, he was in British Columbia and he was he was an astronomer. He was well known Canadian astronomer in fifties and fifties uh, sixties uh, and earlier. I think he passed away in nineteen sixty. Um, and he uh, he was observing interstellar uh, radiation from interstellar medium, and he discovered that there is um, a temperature. But these molecules that seem to live in between the stars, places where it could be arbitrarily cold, but somehow things never get very cold. There was a small temperature, and it was a mystery why these uh, these molecules in in outer space had this uh, small temperature. But it turned out that we realized now that temperature is the temperature of microwave background. At the time, McCullough didn't realize that's the reason. That what, in fact, that's what, uh, that's what really he was seeing was the temperature of this cosmic glow that was created at the Big Bang. Right. And what's really ironic is the first reference I, as that I know of to McKellar's work in the context of cosmology was Fred Hoyle talking about it to George Gamow. So a bit of context. Gamow was one of the proponents of the Big Bang. Hoyle was a proponent of an alternative theory called the steady state theory. And the Gamow thought it was the temperature of the cosmic microwave background was, uh, I think, at least five degrees Kelvin. Mm -hmm. And here's a quote from Hoyle talking about McKellar's work. Open quote. This is from New Scientist. Open quote. I recall my telling George Gamow that it was impossible for the universe to have a microwave background with a temperature as high as he was claiming, because observations of the methylidine and cyanogen radicals by Andrew McKellar had set an upper limit of 3K for any such background, close quote. So he'd actually used it in a sort of argument, so you can't, you can't discover the CMB as you think it is, because they thought it was warmer, because McKellar 
had found this this afterglow. And then there was another quote from Hoyer, which I, I really like this one, where he's talking to Dickey, quote, it must have been in 1964 that I was sitting beside Lake Como in Italy when Bob Dickey from Princeton, with Bob Dickey from Princeton University. Dickey told me that his group at Princeton was setting up an experiment to look for a possible microwave background, and they were expecting a temperature of about 20 Kelvin. I said this was way too high because a background, if there was one, could not have a temperature above three Kelvin. The excitation temperature of molecular lines of CH and CN found by McKellar in 1940. Shortly after that, the background was found at the Bell Telephone Labs by Penzias and Wilson, and it had a temperature almost exactly on McKellar's value. The big mistake Bob Dick and I made was not to realize we had it there besides Lake Como in our coffee cups. However carefully one guards against it, opportunities like this come and then slip away through one's fingers. But there's another irony, because not only did Penzias and Wilson not discover the CMB, McKellar did, but even before them at Bell Labs, there was another guy called E.A. Ohm, as an engineer, and he also had discovered that there was this hiss in every direction of the sky. And um, Jim Peebles, who later won the Nobel Prize, cosmology, yeah, and- I should say, <laughs> yes, <laughs> he described this as a dirty little secret of Bell Labs. So, so there's a long, basically, Penzias and Wilson, I would say, tell me if you think I've got this right, they were the first to discover it and get the attention of the world, but they weren't really the first to discover it. And, and that's, that's a theme that we actually uh, see a lot in the book, uh, that not, this, the, not, not the first person is the person necessarily who gets the pre- credit, but the person who actually uh, popularizes the notion. And Penzias and Wilson certainly were very good at doing that. Right. Well, that's our first, first myth covered. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear them. And stay subscribed as we bring you more Big Bang Myths.